I'm Peter De Cristofaro, president of the Providence Jewelry Museum. I worked in my uncle's jewelry factory summers during pharmacy school, and he was a believer in the old-fashioned apprenticeship. So he literally made me suffer through years of doing things the very old way. And he said, if you learn the old way, the new stuff's easy. And so when factories started closing in the late 70s, he was very angry and sad. He said, well, who's going to remember how to do all this stuff in the future? You have to start a jewelry museum and collect all these artifacts so people will know in the future. So I, I had two of my friends, we went down to City Hall in November 1977. We started the Providence Jewelers Museum, it was called then. I was young, I was broke, and I received a call from a man at Gorham that I knew. He said, if you come to Gorham right now, every die we have is in the parking lot, and we have three welding companies destroying them. And so I had enough money to fill my truck I had, and I went there, and I picked up all these dies. I picked up over 100 of them, and they're the only existing dies. So I started buying and selling the factories that were going out of business. I saved a piece or a pot of over 120 factories, and that's what this museum contains. So the importance of it is teaching. This museum is a source of education, a source of history, and a source of tourism. But if we, if we didn't have something to teach, where would the validity be? The new exhibit was called The Tools of Treasures. We always wondered when you go into a museum and you see some caveman's axe, and that was a tool of a certain period or another spear or harpoon. And I always said to myself, gee, all our axes and harpoons, we know where they came from. So we always thought, wouldn't it be interesting to show the public that these beautiful pieces of jewelry came from not what they would consider a tool, but these big chunks of blocks of steel that aren't pretty at all. So we felt it would, be, it would be the first time that jewelry was ever exhibited with the tools that made it, especially the die struck jewelry. We're able now to show you these little treasures next to these tools and the tools aren't pretty. And so the juxtaposition of the, of the beauty and the beast to us made us come up with this exhibit, The Tools of Treasures. The future is uh, what I call a culture of making. We're not looking at it as a jewelry museum anymore. We're looking at it as a place that teaches a culture of making. It happens to be jewelry, or it happens to be silverware. But now, the tactile qualities of understanding how to make, our society needs now. And we believe we're in a higher level now of not just teaching how to make jewelry, but teaching how to make. And so we see ourselves as being one of the most phenomenal resources in the world of a culture of making.